The diminished scale is a symmetrical scale that you're probably already aware of and it's a great sound that you definitely want to have in your vocabulary and use in your solos. The problem with it is that if you start looking for material and lessons online then most of the time you get told to practice all these repeating patterns within the scale. And of course some people can get that to work in their playing. For me personally, it gets too predictable and a little bit too repetitive, too repetitive, too repetitive. And I have another approach to improvising with material from the diminished scale that I'm gonna cover in this video. And strangely enough, I never really focused on practicing the scale itself. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. Let's first cover some basics. When I'm using the diminished scale, then I'm pretty much always using it on dominant chords. So if we have a G7, then the diminished scale that I would use on this would be an F diminished, so. So that would be F, G, A flat, B flat, B, C sharp, D, E, and then I'm back on F. Some people prefer to think of this as the G half hole, and that's the same note set. You just think of it from G, A flat, B flat, B, and so on and so forth. This is a scale with eight notes, and it's symmetrical in minor thirds. So that means that whatever melody you play, if you move it up or down a minor third, then it stays within the scale. So if we have this short melody from F, if I move it up a minor third to A flat, this is still in the scale. If I move it up to B, still in the scale, and from D also. The dominant chord that's associated with this scale would be a G7 with a 13 and a flat 9, and possibly also a sharp 11. And if you hear that in the context of a 2-5, that might sound something like this. And an example of a line using this sound of the dominant could be something like this. Of course, I already said that I don't really like the symmetrical melodies that you can make with this scale because they're too predictable. But the symmetrical aspect of the scale is actually really useful if you're looking for structures to use and you want to explore that because if you can construct a structure on one note, then you can immediately transpose that to some other ones and that way get a lot of different options available. And the main part of this lesson is of course about doing just that. If we look at the scale, if I start on the G, then I can actually construct this structure, which is of course G, B, D, a G major triad. But since I can do that, then that means that I can move that around and transpose that in minor thirds. So I have a G major triad, I have a B flat major triad, I have a D flat major triad, and an E major triad. And this is something that we can easily put to use because we can start improvising, working with connecting these triads and their inversions, and in that way create some really strong melodies. To add a little bit of context to the triads, then it's useful to just check out what notes are actually in there because they're gonna have different colors on top of our G7. So if we start with the G major triad, that's of course just the basic triad. So root, third, and fifth. If we take the B flat major, then we start with the sharp nine, and then we get the fifth and the seventh. The D flat major triad is the sharp 11 or flat five, and then the seventh and the flat nine. The E is the 13, the flat nine, and the third. So we have a lot of different colors available, especially if we focus on the E and the D flat triads. The G major triad can be a little bit tricky to use, but then if we use that one, then we're really tying things back to the sound of the dominant, which is also not necessarily a bad thing, as you will see in the examples. Because I didn't like the sound of the repetitive patterns, then I spent more time working on improvising with the different structures that you have in the diminished scale, and especially these four major triads. And the way you work on this is, of course, just to try and compose a lot of different lines with these triads, and also just to work on combining them and connecting them and making melodies with the triads and their inversions. So this example is using the B flat major triad and the E major triad on the G7 and both are in first inversion so first this one and then the E major so it's really giving us both the sharp 9 the 13 and the flat 9 on top of the chord Here 
Here I'm combining a D flat major and a B flat major trial on top of the G7, and that's giving me a sharp 11, a flat 9, and a sharp 9. It's probably important to mention that when I'm talking about these combinations of triads, then they're not always what you would consider a triad pair. And that's because for a triad pair, for two triads to work as a triad pair, then they don't have any notes in common. And in this case, for instance, I'm using the D flat and the B flat triad, and they have the F in common, so they're not in that way a triad pair. The combination of the B flat and the E major triad don't have any common notes, so in that way they are what you would traditionally consider a triad pair. So one of the ways that I actually practiced working with these triads and improvising with them was just to sit down and try to combine the triads, just try and connect the four triads. So I would play one triad in an inversion and then move on to the next one, just sort of freely improvising with that. That could be something like this. And of course you can take it a lot further than just the major triads. And I think the first place you want to look is if you take the major triads or G major triad, then notice that the scale actually also allows us to construct a minor triad. So we have a G minor triad and the scale is symmetrical. So that means that we have G minor, we have B flat minor, D flat minor and E minor. Combining the major and minor triads opens up a lot more options and if you do that on a 2-5-1 with a B-flat minor and a G major triad, then you get something like this. Another structure that's definitely worth checking out in the diminished scale is a quartal arpeggio. And there's especially one that I use really a lot, that's the quartal arpeggio you can create from the F, and then you have F, B and E. You probably know this as the top part of this G713 voicing. And this works extremely well if you combine it with some of the triads like this. Another great type of structure that you can explore when you're using the diminished scale is shell voicings. And in this case, the minor major shell voicings work really well. For the G7, if you'd have an A flat minor major shell voicing like this, then you have sort of the chord that's like a G7 with a flat 9, 3rd and the root in the melody. Of course this, work, this will work as an arpeggio as well. And you can move it up a minor 3rd, like anything else in this scale. And then you have this, which is a B minor major shell voicing, which you can use as a sort of G7 with a sharp 9 and a perfect 5th. And that works really well as an arpeggio as well, like this. <laughs> Another great sound that you definitely want to have in your vocabulary that's a huge part of, well, jazz in general, but certainly modern jazz, is the melodic minor scale. And if you want to check out how to get started using that and get that into your playing on Lydian dominant, altered dominance, and tonic minor chords, then check out this video.